Hey everyone, it's already been a month and a half since Classic Burning Crusade was released. Some of us already did everything we wanted to accomplish, and some of us are still leveling our first or second character to level 70. Everyone's goal is different in WoW, and the beauty of Classic WoW and Classic TBC is that all the content will be relevant for as long as the expansion runs. So today, we're back with another tips and tricks video. We'll be touching on a few different aspects of the game, from reputations to professions to questing and more. And hopefully, this video will help you save some time and learn new things that you didn't know about. Those tips will also probably serve you on a future alt that you'll be leveling to 70. Or maybe they'll serve you on your main if you're not 70 yet. So without further ado, let's get into it. First and foremost, disenchant anything in the game as early as level 35 or 300 enchanting. So disenchanting is one of those professions that anyone should have on at least one character. Not necessarily to make enchants, although that could be a good money maker, but rather to make you a lot of gold from disenchanting greens that you would otherwise have vendored. You see, you'll be getting tons of green and blue bind on equip pieces of gear all throughout your journey in Outland. What most players do is they just vendor them, which is fine, but you could make way more gold by disenchanting them instead. And a lot of people don't do that because what they don't know is that you only need to reach level 300 in enchanting to be able to disenchant any item in the game, including level 70 items. And you can reach 300 in enchanting, or any other profession for the matter, as early as level 35. That's the minimum level to become an artisan enchanter and be able to reach 300 from there. So if you have a character which is level 35 or more sitting there doing nothing, consider leveling your enchanting on it and throwing all the BOE items you obtain to that character to make you a lot of gold. Also, long gone are the days where you had to go around the world to find trainers that could teach you the higher levels of enchanting. You can now do it all from your capital city. It can be pricey however to do that, but you'll get your investment back from disenchanting in no time. Moving on, we have an alchemy trick. This one was brought up to us by one of our viewers, Robert Fowler, on our gold making add-ons video. So thanks to him. And remember, if you have any tips like these and you want us to cover it, please leave them in the comments and we'll probably bring them up in a future video. So, you know how to become a transmute master in alchemy, which is really the only alchemy specializations you should go for if you're after making gold, but to become a transmute master, you need to do a quest in Netherstorm that requires level 68 and asks you to bring 4 primal might. Primal mites are a very expensive reagent, they're currently going for above 100 gold on my server, and this quest is very costly for this reason. So what Robert Fowler brought up is that you you can actually go for a less expensive alchemy mastery, say potion mastery or elixir mastery, and because those quests are so much cheaper to turn in than the transmute mastery quest, you can then change your alchemy specialization for 150 gold by speaking to your potion or elixir master and ask them to unlearn your spec. Then just head to the transmute master in Netherstorm and he will teach you transmute mastery for free. Congratulations, you just saved probably a around 200 gold by doing this. Moving on, we got a tip to level your Shatar reputation faster, which is known to be one of the harder reputations to level in TBC because of how few ways there is to level it. Well, did you know that you could actually gain reputation with the Shatar from turning Aldor or Scryer's rep tokens? Indeed, turning those to the Aldor or the Scryer's rep will also give you rep with the Shatar all the way up to Honored, or actually one point away from Honored. So this can help you reach Revered with the Shatar faster and quickly get into Netherstorm heroic dungeons because as I said, there's very few ways to level your Shatar reputation compared to every other reputation which has some sort of rep token tied to it or a bunch of quests. It turns out that the Shatar does not have a bunch of quests but does have rep tokens but it's just very well hidden. Next up, we have the Spirit Shard Vendor in Terracar Forest. If you ever did any of the dungeons in Akindun, you probably came across those Spirit Shards. This is a currency dropped from every boss in any dungeons there. If you're like most people, you either just delete it or put it in your bank collecting dust. 
Well, it turns out that this currency is quite useful. First, you can buy some half-decent blue helmets with it for every gear type. And you can even buy an epic ring with 50 of them. Or a metagem. If you're like me, you've had a helmet with a metagem socket on it and you never filled it because of how expensive metagems are nowadays. Well, you can get either of those two metagems from this vendor for just 8 shards. And they're not too bad either. But probably the most useful things to buy with those spirit shards are the Akanai mana and healing potions. If you're a class that uses mana, you probably go through mana potions a lot, especially if you're in a high-end guild. So you can buy those Akanai mana potions, which are the exact same as the regular super mana potions for just two spirit shards. This will probably save you a lot of gold, and if you don't need any of those potions, that's one thing you could spend your spirit shards collecting dust on, to make some gold out of them. Next, let's talk about the engineering trinkets. Engineering is one of those professions that isn't very useful for a lot of classes. I mostly see protection paladins use it personally. But engineering is quite useful for gold making, especially with the moat extractor that you can use to collect moats from clouds around the world. And when engineering arrows and bullets are added to the game, you'll be able to make some of those to make some decent gold with that too. Anyways, one of the major advantages that engineering has is the teleporting trinkets. I forgot about those for the longest time until someone reminded me of them. If you're a gnomish engineer, you can teleport to Toshley Station in Blades Edge Mountain. And if you're a goblin engineer, you can go to Area 52 in Netherstorm. Anyone who wanted to go to either of those places knows how long it takes to fly from Shathrat to there. So those trinkets are a godsend. And obviously, you know how annoying it is to go to Outland if you're in your capital city using the auction house and your hearthstone happens to be on cooldown. You could use ghetto hearthing, which we talked about too in another video, but if there isn't any instance around, being an engineer and having one of those trinkets in your bags will be a huge time saver. So if you're an engineer and you haven't made one of these yet, do it as soon as you can. They're definitely worth it. Speaking of professions, let's talk about the tailoring clots that you can make every 4 days. I might be fool for not realizing this for the longest time, but I actually thought that making one clot would put all your other clots on cooldown. Just like making one transmute in alchemy puts all your transmutes on cooldown. So I just did the most expensive cloth, which is shadow cloth at this time on my server every 4 days and thought that's it. But it turns out that no, you can make each and every type of cloth once every 4 days. I feel so dumb for not knowing this sooner, but if you're in the same basket as me, there you go. Make sure to make all your shadow cloth, spell cloth, and primal moon cloth every 4 days. You will have to travel to all of Zangar Marsh, Shadowmoon Valley, and Netherstorm to make those, but you'll be a richer person at least after doing that. And small bonus tip on that note, you can actually do the specialization quest for tailoring as early as level 60 as opposed to level 68 for alchemy. A lot of you guys brought this up on one of our previous videos, so thank you for pointing that out. I actually thought you had to be level 68 for tailoring too. Next up, we have a small trick to make those annoying escort quests in Shathrat or in Caverns of Time way less annoying. If you don't know about either of these and never did them, I'm about to save you 15 to 20 minutes of your life. And if you already did them, you know how annoying they are, and I'm also about to save you 15 to 20 minutes of your time on any future character you'll make. So, let's start with the Shatrat Escort quest. You have to do this one to join a Shatrat faction, either the Aldor or the Scryers. And this has an 8 minute escort quest that has you go all around Shatrat and learn about the lore of this place. If you'd rather not spend 8 minutes following an annoying NPC around, just AFK at this spot, near the Badge of Justice vendor, and go about your day doing something more productive. By the time the NPC finishes his escort, which you don't need to follow, you'll receive credit for this quest. Then, for the Caverns of Time quest, it's basically the same. This is required to enter Escape from Durnhold and, by extension, Black Morass. So, this is a rite of passage for any player, and anyone who did it knows how annoying and long it is to follow this NPC around. Well, the good news is that you can just sit AFK where you pick the quest, and when the NPC makes their full turn, which takes around 8 to 10 minutes, you'll receive credit for this quest. 
And this was the last tip on our list. I really like doing those tips videos because I feel like I'm saving people hundreds of hours of their time collectively every time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you found something useful here. Our goal is always to bring you more value with those tips and help you guys have a better experience with the game. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the Classic Wild Curios channel for more content like this. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.